Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9GP, and welcome back to another episode of my UAB Blazers playthrough with uh, Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020. We're going to hopefully get through the rest of the schedule today. we got nine games left. Um, you know, if, if you saw last episode, I am worried about this season. I think it's probably going to be a step back. I'm hoping that we're still on track to, to turn this team into a, a good one, but um, it's probably not going to happen this year for sure. And and I I feel bad because, you know, Horton, a senior power forward, he's been my best player in the three seasons now that I've been with this team. Um, kind of sucks for him that he's going to go out uh, a loser, but I don't really see uh, – and just you know, unless we just have like a miracle finish, I know last year we were we won seven of nine. This year, uh, with the schedule that we got, we got a tough run. Charlotte on the road is our next game. They've been playing better. They've been kind of a pushover team in the previous couple seasons in this league, but this year they're they're looking good. Same with Rice. Um, it's just you know. It's going to be really tough. And we close out with two games on the road. Five of the nine remaining games are on the road. So um, I, I was probably overconfident coming into this season. And just, once again, just makes you realize how tough this team or how tough this game can be. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, you know, if, if we were somehow to get lucky and win five out of four, um, or five out of nine, sorry. I'd feel pretty good about that. I think we're going to struggle, though, to reach that. You know, winning six or seven out of nine, I think, is almost impossible with the schedule and the team. But that's why you play the games out. So um, we'll, we should get through the season today. A couple of things I wanted to mention, though. Uh, first off, with recruiting, a couple of uh, viewers made some great comments, pointed out some things about recruiting, and they just, you know, the gist of it is you really are wasting a re recruiting pick for, on a one-star guy. And um, I know that that power forward position is going to be weak next year, and so that was kind of what I was going for. I was just wanting to really get a body in there. Uh, but he is he hasn't been too great uh, ratings-wise. I do like the rebound numbers he's getting in, in high school, so I I don't know. Like they say, um, it might be best to cut this guy and free up that recruit slot. I'm gonna I'm gonna see in the off season if his ratings change once he joins the team. I've seen that happen. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence, but I do take the feedback. It's it's good feedback. I think you know you need to really. Um, even at this level on this Conference USA uh, team, you know, where, where the prestige isn't that great, I do think you need to get three star and above recruits if you can. And definitely four and five would be better uh, if you get lucky and, and, and do that. And last year, I think, was a really good recruiting season for us. This year, probably not going to be so much. I, we would probably be out of the top 100 in recruit class this year. But. There are some intangibles that I always look for, you know, and so, uh, you know, like this guy's rebounding is not too bad. His inside shooting's good, so it's hard to say still. I mean, if he could be a, a player who, once he joins the team, he could be uh, competitive, you know, against the talent in this conference. So it's it's always hard to say, but the, the dilemma that I'm under – there are no really good options uh, at power forward at this point. I, I don't have any other players who are really interested enough to put much time and, and effort into to recruiting them at this point. You know, so I'm just gonna ride it out, see how it, how it plays out. But um, going forward, I'm, I'm gonna work a little bit harder to to keep that from happening. I think next season. I'm going to get the gold star recruits um, when you when you have the option early in the season to purchase the um, I forget how it's called a scouting plan or a recruit package however it's called if you have a choice between a gold and the basic 
if you can afford the gold, I think it's better uh, option. It worked out really well last year. I think that's one of the things that helped us get that, you know, top 50 recruiting class because I was able to see a little bit more detail right off the bat, you know, right at the start of recruiting. I was able to target a little bit better. Um, it's just easier, I think, to get the better players with that package. Another thing I'm, I'm, I noticed after, you know, the last episode, just looking at some overall play and stats from the team and, and play time, on the depth chart, for some reason, um, with Horton, he's getting 28 minutes now at power forward, but I'm giving Matthews um, the backup time there. And for whatever reason, it seems like either he's only playing power forward and Daniels is only playing center. I can't figure out what's going on between those two, but it seems like there are games where Matthews is getting time at both center and power forward. And uh, maybe I'm, um, unfortunately, I haven't seen a way where you can look at the game log, maybe uh, future versions. It'd be nice if this isn't available. It'd be nice if you could see just how many minutes your guys got at each at each position. Um, like if I were to go and look at a previous game, um, just Middle Tennessee, for instance. Um, so I got Matthews here getting 20 minutes, but I don't know what positions he played in this game. Um, you know, I'm not seeing here any anyway. And and the the insights tab, you can look at you know lineup tracking, which I've shown before, and I look at that quite a bit. But I don't even there. I don't see. Um, I mean, you're only looking at the starting or the or the five that are out there on the floor. I don't really know that you're seeing their position unless unless this is how it works. You know, point guard, shooting guard small forward, power forward, um, center, if that's the case, then, you know, looking through here, uh, I'm seeing Matthews, uh, looks like I saw D Daniels here at power forward, so I don't, I'm a little, um, I guess I'm just not sure why he's getting, you know, some of the minutes that he's getting. Um, so I didn't know if maybe my depth chart was off or maybe it's just doing what I'm thinking it's supposed to be doing. Maybe it's, it's a situation where Horton's getting into foul trouble, but, you know, just looking at the list here, it does seem like Matthews is backing up primarily at, um, at power forward. All right, well. I guess maybe I can just chalk that up to power, uh, foul trouble or not. But I, I didn't real. I guess I was wanting to throw it out there because if some of you longtime players, maybe you're, have you noticed things like that where you're, even your depth chart, though it's set a certain way, guys may be playing out of the positions that you've got them in, um, or if they're getting more minutes than you think they are or should get. I've got it set. I, this is a fairly generous setting I think sub out is set for like 75 uh, I don't know how you how you get that setting up it, sometimes it comes up sometimes it doesn't but it, it's usually 75 percent I think is what I've got it set for them to sub out that may play into it uh, but it's just a question I, I think I had maybe maybe nothing's going on but uh, if you guys have any experience with that let me know in the comments I'd appreciate it but we're going to go ahead and get started. We're just, um, I, I intend really to ride this one out in terms of the, the play, the lineups, depth chart, because, you know, I, I've got guys out there who are getting the experience, playtime I'm hoping that they need. And um, I'm not giving up on this season, but I, I realize now we're not going to challenge for the conference championship. So, my goal is really just to get these guys play time, stay as competitive enough that we finish, you know, around the middle, a little bit 
better than the middle in standings. I think maybe if we, we were to get 9-9 nine and nine again, that would put us probably where, where we were last year, which was 5th or 6th or so in, in the conference uh, standings. All right, so Charlotte on the road. This, um, this would be probably an upset if we beat them. Uh, just to tell you how good they're playing. I mean, they're they're six and three in the conference. This team has been uh, having poor seasons. Uh, I can't look at it from here, I guess, without going out of the schedule. But I think they've been one of the bottom teams the, the last two seasons. Um, yeah, so they they beat us easily, eighty five sixty eight. Uh, why Campbell Horton, our top players, they had some really good balance scoring. Defenses, I've said before, defenses has been a struggle this year. We're not the defensive team we're usually, we've usually been, so that's been disappointing. Um, I play some zone. I don't play a whole lot of man-to-man. -man. Next year we might have to start working towards man-to-man. Uh, -man. I think we're going to have some of these newer recruits I've gotten uh, the last couple seasons may give us a better chance to to work some man-to-man -man defense in there uh, let's see we didn't shoot bad 25 of 47 uh, but they just had a lot more attempts gosh they controlled the ball uh, out rebounded this uh, we were poor from the line that's another one uh, I, I think why who isn't a good free throw shooter I mean he had a good scoring game here inside we led in points in the paint but um, that was a struggle, and Daniels, another one, uh, you know, he's the backup center. He's a senior. He struggled. I'm really looking forward to seeing what that transfer coming in next year is going to do at center. But, uh, and, and really, you know, why might be my choice for power forward next year? Um, you know, that could be uh, that could be pretty good because he's a good rebounder now. He's gotten better. With rebounding um, over the last couple seasons, even scoring is a little bit better and re uh, inside shooting. He might be a good guy to throw in power forward. Jones looked good off the bench, small forward. Um, I'm going to be interested still to see if he develops any. He could be competing with Martin, uh, easily with Martin, because Martin really hasn't shown me much this year. Uh, he could be you know, the starting small forward next year. Uh, Campbell, he was a little off, just four assists, nine points. His his numbers have come down from where he was early in the season. Let's take a look at the emails here. I'm probably just going to see some scouting reports. And we're starting a new week. So we might have a couple games this week. We need a, you know, we need a good winning streak. We just haven't had that this season. I think three, three games in a row, maybe two or three. I don't even know if we've won three in a row. Um, last year, you know, we started out five and zero, oh, and then late in the conference, we got uh, another good streak of wins going. We just haven't had that this year. So with eight games left. Uh, we're not going to win all eight, obviously, but I feel like, you know, we're going to have to have a road win. Um, this could be interesting. Texas San Antonio, two years ago, they were the best team probably in the conference. Uh, they made it. They they lost the tournament in the tournament championship to Old Dominion, but made it as a an invite to the Final Four tournament. They've um, they've really had a rough rough time of it this season, two and eight in conference, and so we we win, but man, we win close, seventy one sixty nine. Uh, gosh, not not good, <laughs> not good. It's making me, you know, uh, I'm gonna have to next year. I'm, I think I'm gonna have to start incorporating some new offensive and defensive schemes to this team because. Um, 
we're not the team that we've been really even the previous two years. So defensively, we held them uh, 22 of 61 the shooting. Uh, they were great at the line, though. They out-rebounded us 35-34. It's close. Why was the player of the, of the game? Once again, poor free throw shooting. I've mentioned this again. I probably don't even need to. But I really wish there was an option to work on free throws and training, especially, you know, like individual players. That would be a great option to add to this game. You look at the shooting... McCleary throwing up those threes. Uh, three for seven is not too bad, really, I don't think, from a shooting guard. But Horton, he, he was terrible in this game. One of his worst games of the season. 0-4-7 shooting. Uh, he did get 10 rebounds, but that's about it. They really, they, I don't know if it was Reed who he was playing up against. Yeah, um, a little bit close, I guess. Maybe Reed's a better defensive player. Why, though, 18 points, that was a good game from him. Uh, Campbell, six assists, I'll take that. And then off the bench, Jones again looks good. Matthews, uh, Daniels, those guys look good. Matthews and Daniels both are seniors, so I'll miss that depth from them for sure next year. In the paint, we, we won that battle. Uh, Jones got more point or more play time than, than Martin, who was just terrible in this game. I mean, Jones was was certainly, God, he's just, you know, the, these. this is what um, right now makes me hesitant with Jones is because he's got the potential in several categories, but his current ability, like, you know, drawing fouls, defensive ability and rebounding, uh, passing, scoring is too low. It's two, whereas Martin... He's got three scoring, three defensive ability. Um, it's just it's a toss up between those two. It really is, whether you know who's who's the better player. But that was not a, the convincing win I think we needed. Um, so it did get us back to five and six, one game under five hundred in, in, in the conference. I forget who we're playing next. I think it might be Southern Miss. Uh, who, who, you know, they're they're going to be a tough matchup. They've always been pretty tough, I think, since uh, in the three seasons that I've been on this run with UAB. And I'm assuming if we're going to play them, it's probably going to be this Saturday game. We may not have it. Nope. Yep. Uh, we're going on the road against Rice. Um, man, that's you know the schedule is just not favoring us. You know we we need we need a, a, a two or three subpar opponents I think in a row, and you see that every time we play a good guy, the next you know we 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 play a, a weak team, and then right after we play one of the better teams in the conference. I mean this would be. Gosh, this this would be a great win, but I don't foresee it happening, and it didn't. 63-50. Campbell, though, 21 points. Great game from him. Horton, um, I guess teams have kind of picked up that he's he's the player to to defend on this team, and he just um, he's really been shut out, shut down last couple games. All right, let me see what the box score looks like yeah it's another thing where the second half um, we're getting we're just you know that's that's probably on me at this point because we're either getting tired or, or something is going on in that second half to keep us from um, from getting back in the game. But this was a bad one. Shooting 17 to 56. They out rebounded this 45 to 31. Um, so bad shooting from them, but they they kind of controlled the game for the most part. And you know, that's um, for Campbell, I mean that's one of his highest scoring games, you know, that puts his 
point total back up there. He's not very happy. The team relationship's not very good with him. I don't, I don't know why. But you can see that was his career best in, in scoring. Yeah, sure, it sure was. 21 points. And he's had, you know, he's had some good scoring games here um, throughout the season. But man, that's that's just, you know, we need to be better than than this, and we're not. So let's take a look at the standings. We're down here at the bottom, you know. I mean, a lot of, like I said, 99 would put you above the middle in this conference. Uh, Charlotte surprisingly is is having one of the best you know they're, they're on a seven game win streak and we've got U UTEP still to play I think we're even, I think we even have Western Kentucky still to play Old Dominion still to play uh, we may you know we may be looking at our, our worst season in conference right now jumping back to the dashboard uh, So we've got Southern Miss, UTEP, Old Dominion. So now we're, you know, we've got three at home, three away. I don't even know if the Southern Miss, I don't even know if we could beat them at home uh, at the moment. But let's get through it. I'm still, you know, I, I'm hopeful that next year is the year for me, but if it's not, it might be time to turn this one, uh, you know, to just kind of give up <laughs> on, on being successful with this game. Um, I've always been, you know, when it comes to the kind of play that I like, I'm always pretty conservative anyway. Um, when I play out any sports management games that I play, like the, out of the park baseball or really anything else. I like I like building long time programs, you know, and I don't mind having a few losing seasons here and there if I feel like I'm going to get somewhere at the end. You, this one I'm I'm starting to worry um, that maybe I I'm not going to get there with this one. So we're matched up fit five and seven in the conference. I would expect that we'd be competitive. So, well, you know, it was competitive, 92-87. McCleary, 22 points. Horton, back in the double digits in scoring. We really needed that win, but it's, uh, you know, we're just so far, far in the hole right now uh, as a team. So I don't like the fact that these are some close, close games, even the ones that we're winning. We're just not... You know, we're just not really running away with anybody. They shot well uh, in this game, 50, over 50%. We shot 50%, so we were good. We were a little bit better in the free throw line and three-pointers. We were really good, but they were 10 of 21 three-pointers. They out-rebounded us, uh, kind of a surprise, but they've got Johnson. Yeah, he's, he's a better center than anything we've got on our team, so I can understand that. Worrell, uh, he's an okay Power, well, he's center playing at power forward. Horton got a lot of minutes, um, 12.7 rebounds. He still had a respectable year. Uh, oh, taking all together, it might be uh, one of his better. You know, it's very close. It's close to last year unless he uh, has some higher scoring games. He's getting more rebounds uh, than... Martin, 10 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists. I could take that. I think that's a good line. Only 18 minutes. Y was pretty good. Campbell, scoring not there, 5 assists. McCleary, though, 22 points. That's not his career high. And he's at 11 points. I mean, we've got, uh, at this point, we've got 4 starters who are double digits in points for what it's worth, and that's something we've struggled with uh, in the previous seasons have had this team off the bench miles backing up uh, at shooting guard had a good game he's you know his team relationships not too good I don't know um, I, the coach relationships are pretty good 
So I don't know if I've got anybody on the team in danger of transferring out, but it wouldn't surprise me if one or two of those guys um, decide to transfer out. Hopefully Campbell's going to stay simply because, well, I, I can't imagine him not staying unless he just really wants to go to a better program because he's definitely getting the play. I mean, he's going to be uh, – it wouldn't surprise me if he's a four-year starter if he keeps developing. And then off the bench, looking further, Matthews Jones struggled in this one. So, again, it's it's up and down between him and Martin. Martin was the better player in this one. So now getting back, I forget who we're playing again. Um, but we've only got five games left now, five games left. And we would have to win them all to equal our uh, regular season record from last season. I think one thing I want to do, too, at the end of this episode, I haven't done it this season as much. Um, I've looked at it offline, um, but I want to show what the rest of the teams are looking like. Oh, man, UTEP on the road. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, the the schedule is um, – and you can't really do much about that conference schedule because it just depends on once the thing starts. You don't really know who's good and who's bad. You've got more um, – You've really got more of an idea or a better idea of the quality of teams you're facing in your non-conference schedule, right? Who knew, you know, Charlotte was going to be a good one or Rice was going to be a dominant team. Uh, but it's like one good opponent or easier opponent followed by a bad. It's been that all that way all year. This would be just... Uh, yeah, we can't do it. We're just not good enough to, to upset a team like that. Horton got another double-double, uh, you know, just 14 points. But Campbell, Matthews, so Matthews off the bench had more than the last starters, but they got a couple guys with 20-plus points. I mean, I'm really assuming that unless we just had just a great run and the – uh, tournament, the Conference USA tournament, we're probably not even going to have a chance at a postseason tournament here. Where's our Where's our game? There it is. First one. Um, 55 points. I mean, uh, Martin, no points. Why center? You know, he, he looked bad. Going up against Flint, who's a four-star freshman center. Uh, Campbell had a decent game. Um, McCleary was shut down. Matthews off the bench looked good. Miles looked okay. Shooting, we, we struggled. Uh, they struggled 29 to 74, but 74 attempts. Um, I don't know how that happens. They're just the rebounds are close. But that they hardly went to the free throw line. Uh, that's a weird game. Weird, weird. Um, how do you get that many? How do you get that many field goal attempts if, you know, turnovers, uh, not many turnovers? Okay, that's that goes to their favor for sure. Wow. You would think, though, with rebounding being that close, I mean, gosh, I would think it, uh, the attempts would be kind of close. So I think, I think it put, that puts us, at, yeah, two games below, 500 so we've got to win three of four now to to look respectable I'm doubting we can do that because two you know we end up two games on the road I think we're probably looking seven and eleven maybe uh, for the conference big step back and unfortunately that's gonna hurt my our team's reputation um, going into next season. This has been a really disappointing season. At this point, you know, really I, I was struggling with that non-conference schedule. 
uh, but you know, because I I played three ranked opponents. But really, at this point, that's not the problem. We're not we're not good enough. And I, I guess it's just their age. I'm hoping that's what it's all about. Uh, but this is probably going to be a loss too. Old Dominion once again, pretty strong team. Uh, <clears throat> Eighty fifty eight. Pretty much that, you know, that just kills our season. Um, I don't see us winning the last three uh, at this point. So I'm, I'm really going to have to start worrying about my job, I think, with this program again. I was let go at Penn State. I think I, yeah, I was hoping I got um, a season or two. Man, heard 35 points. Gosh, point guard. Yeah. Their three point shooting was incredible. Ten of fifteen from Hurd. Uh and then on our side, you know, once again, you know, we didn't get the uh, attempts. Turnovers thirteen to nineteen. Uh Horton was okay. Eight rebounds, ten points. Campbell, not you know, McCleary, nobody McCleary was one of twelve for shooting. So this guy's just not, he's not doing it either. All right, well, um, this is going to, you know, one of the things I think I'm, I'm going to have to, I'll check it right now too. I think um, job security is 100%, but I think I'm in the last year of my contract. Now, what, how can I see that? Is it under your office? Not four years remaining. Four years remaining on the contract. Okay. I, I didn't realize uh, I'd signed a, an extension. Not that that matters, but... All right, come on. Let's, let's turn it around. Let's finish strong. I think... The rest of the competition might not be, you know, at least we're not playing, I don't think, those top three teams anymore. This is kind of a, um, a mirror image, really, of what we did my, my first year with this team. We finished the regular season 13 and 16, but we were 11 and 7 in conference. Okay, so it's Middle Tennessee at home. Um, this would be terrible. Of course, you know, they'd probably look at it like, all right, this is this is a chance to get another win. So they might be fired up. Uh, now we easily handle them here. 75-51. Horton, 14 points. Why is, looks like he's going to be the player of the game, I'm guessing. Grant McCleary suffered an injury. Hopefully that's not too bad. Let me take a look at the, the game, the box score here. Okay, for this one, yeah, poor Middle Tennessee, man. They have, they have struggled. They shot 27% in this game. Uh, we out-rebounded them 36-29. We shot over 50%. Three pointers. McCleary, you know, he's he's injured now for seven days. Wow. Well, um, I've said before though, I, I don't mind him taking the attempts right now. That might be stupid, but I'm hoping that he gets better. Um, and you know, next year he's still got four potential. So as as a sophomore, you know, give him another year, maybe he gains a a little bit better rating boost in some of those categories. Uh, but he was he was really hurt in this game. Campbell, a good game. Why, solid. Uh, even Horton, I think, was pretty solid in this one. Miles looked good off the bench coming in for um, for McCleary. Pretty decent bench play when you consider you know like the plus minus. Everybody on the team got a chance to play. We outscored them forty two to nothing in the paint. I don't even know what they're doing. Uh, looks like Campbell, their shooting guard, got all of their points. Uh, 22, he got 22, he got over 40% of their points. 
It's crazy. So let's see. Um, I'm going to go back to simming out the week. And the last two games are on the road. Louisiana Tech is one, and I think Texas San Antonio might be the other one. They almost beat us at home, so that's definitely not going to be a give, gimme. Um, I think we're probably going to lose at least one, if not both of those, if I'm, if I'm honest. I think we probably have a better chance against Texas San Antonio. I think Louisiana Tech already beat us at home. Well, they're 10 and 17, but I think they're a team that had a rough non-conference schedule. I think in in uh, yeah, I mean they're seven and nine with us in conference. Man, this is one. Please, guys, just just let's end this on a good note. Nope, 70 to 58. We're a bad team. I mean, we are really a bad team. That's what it boils down to. Uh, I don't have the talent to compete. So we had Campbell, a good game. Uh, I mean, he's, like I say, I mean, he's looking like he's a good point guard for us. Uh, Horton, really going to miss this guy. I, I hope, I don't know. I think what's probably going to happen, and, man, we just had a bad shooting performance here. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but I think what I can probably look towards next year is, is – um, that transfer center, he'll be the starting center and maybe moving Y over to power forward. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping to mix in with the guard play being a little bit better now. I'm hoping to look at some different offensive sets, maybe uh, getting away from the triangle a little bit um, and, and putting some flex in there. I think with a flex offense, I think, or if not flex, yeah, I'm, I'm running motion. I think flex offense, you really have to have some good ball handlers. So I think it looks like, God, they're 17 and 11. Um, I don't know why I thought we had a chance against them. So this is going to be probably an easy loss. 7 11, this will be our worst year um, in this playthrough by far. Um, McCleary. Um, I don't know if he's still injured, but at least he came back and had a good good season. So that's going to wrap it up. I mean, we'll we'll go into the conference tournament. Um, probably struggle to win, you know, to win a game there. Um, I mean, we made this one close on the road, but man, I'm really disappointed. I'm almost embarrassed. We finally had a, a, a decent second half, but I have not progressed at all with this team and uh, really, really disappointing. Um, hmm. I mean, they're, I'm, I'm noticing teams are getting more attempts than we are. I mean, they out-rebounded us. I think turnovers has been an issue we're facing quite a bit. We're still getting a lot of points in the paint. That's going to change, I think, next year with Horton gone. Horton finished pretty strong, 12 points, 7 rebounds. Uh, he might have some um, – same with Y. I don't know if those guys – last year they were both second team all-conference. You know, Campbell might get some notice there too. But who are we going to draw? Uh, none of our players uh, – Western Kentucky. So that's probably not going to be a good draw for us. And you know what? I might just go through the tournament. Uh, I think we're doing pretty good on time. I think I might just go through this tournament right now, and then we'll we'll move into the um, we'll move into the big the final four tournament next season. So Conference USA's tournament. So we got Western Kentucky, and then Rice. Um, let's go back to the grid. Man, 
God, that's so, that's really pathetic. We would have to um, just have a miracle run and, and win all of our games in the tournament. All right, Old Dominion, Florida International, Marshall. Holy cow. Okay, well, 97 to 80. Um, that's nice to, to have a, a win here. So now we're going to be playing Rice, but let me take a look. That may have been our best. That You know, why couldn't we be play like this throughout the year? I mean... Uh, this was our best conference game of the year, um, I think. You know, great free throw shooting there, too, but three-pointers were Jones, 21 points off the bench. Martin, you know, he he uh, he's going to have to watch out, I think, next year, unless he really – Develops with all the playtime he's gotten because he's been a starter now this whole season and got pretty decent play his freshman year. What a game from, from Jones! But then you got Y Horton, not too great. Campbell, eight assists. I like that. McCleary struggled, he didn't get a whole lot of shots off. Is he still injured? Nope. Um, Daniels, Miles. You know, he had double digits and points off the bench. Good game. Really did not expect that. So now we're going to go up against Rice. I think this is where our, you know, where the magic's going to leave us. Uh, No. Okay, so we, we won again. Um, okay, um, maybe I was dogging the team. Maybe they heard. Maybe is that how this happens? So we are now one game away from the championship. This gets El past UTEP. How are we doing this? Okay, so 78-62, and it's not even close. So you got Horton, you know, Horton is playing okay. Wow, Campbell, 33 points, 9 of 13 from three-pointers. Okay, this is <laughs> this is crazy. Now he's the leading scorer on the team now. That's unbelievable. So he was obviously the player of the game. Um it was the three pointers. I mean that that's how we won easily. I mean McCleary three three pointers from him. We were decent from the line. Uh we out rebounded them. They had a really poor shooting performance. Why were we not playing like this in the regular season? That's crazy. And once again, you know, we're struggling in the second half. That's gotta be something I, I, I take I take a look at next year. I'm not going to do it this year because I think it's too much to uh, too much tinkering. But something here is keeping us. And maybe it's center. Uh, maybe his minutes are loaded up in the second half. I think that that could be it. I mean, he's playing six, twelve in the first half, sixteen in the second. I said I wasn't going to tinker with it, but maybe I should. Maybe I should do this. Um, Like, put Daniels here, and that's going to give him 12 in the first half, 14 in the second. You know what, I'm going I'm to try that. 
just to see if maybe Y is getting tired. If maybe that's if that's got anything to do with it. All right, so can the magic continue? No, it's over. So, but you know, at least we picked up a couple more wins. I can, I guess, kind of feel good about that. But you know, I'm, I'm back to really being disappointed in this season. So it's going to be Florida Atlantic and, and UTEP in the championship. They beat us pretty easily. Close game, though, here between Florida Atlantic and Charlotte. So Horton goes out with 15 points. Um, had a good season, 12 points. Like I say, I think, yeah, last year was probably a better year. Uh, he didn't get as many minutes. I don't know if that would close the gap in his scoring. Probably not, but this guy was a really good player. Um, he's going to be hard to replace for me, especially with the with the offenses that I've been using. Y had 13 rebounds, so you know, not a bad season. He finished with 10 points, I think. Though McCleary, yeah, barely 10 points. Um, Campbell, good a good season from him. He might get. I don't know if the, this game has can't remember right now if this game has like all freshman team conference all freshman team I think it does have a freshman player of the year he should probably if there was a freshman team I think he would have a shot at getting some notice uh, but that's how it ends disappointing but um, you know what are you going to do 7 and 11 in conference. Uh, it was you know that that's the thing it it really hit me um as soon as we got to the conference play really that this team is not there yet and it's not going to be there anytime soon may not be there ever. Uh, so it was Texas El Paso winning it. So they'll go to the final four tournament from from our conference. They've been there once or twice since I've been doing this playthrough. But I wonder if Charlotte and Florida Atlantic will get some notice. You know, 21 seasons from them. Charlotte had a good season in conference. We were, you know, look at that. I mean, we were at the bottom. Um, this is going to be um, a longer run than I guess if I, if I want to keep at it. I mean, this is going to take, I think, longer than I'm thinking. Um, this was not just a step back. This was probably two steps two steps back, even though we did find a way to win those two two games in the tournament. Uh, so if I'm looking at the polls, and I'll do that, and then I think, you know, next I'll make a separate episode with the uh, tournament, Final Four tournament. So looking at the rank, it's the same, same teams, really. Arizona, Kansas, Arkansas, Iowa, uh, Mississippi State, I don't think I've seen them that high. Notre Dame, I can't remember if they've been that high. Kent State, um, looking pretty good. Hampton, Pirates, they're having a good season. Uh, Louisville down here, but they're still in the mix. But I'm wondering with the bubble watch, so we know right now it's going to be uh, Belmont from our old um, – Ohio, Ohio Valley Conference there looking good. So UTEP's going to make it. So they're in automatically. And then is there anybody else? Are these all the automatic bids? So I'm not seeing any any other teams from from our conference uh, if you get to the who's out no nah, unless I'm just missing him and I, and I could that could be the case it's probably just going to be UTEP from from our conference this year
Yeah, I'm not seeing them. But let me let me do this. One last thing. I want to look. I'm curious because when I saw Belmont there, um, if you've been following this playthrough long term, um, you know I I played. Penn State was the team I coached before I moved over to UAB, and they are just not—they're just not doing it. They were five and fifteen in conference, eight and twenty-two. I did the best I could with that team. I thought, you know, it would be—I um, I just thought that we had a, a chance with them being. Um, I mean, you can see. You know, we, we were just close a couple seasons to having a 500 or, or better year. Uh, no other coach has really even been close to that. And then another team I wanted to look at, Austin P. I really, you know, the, the first season I had playing with, uh, in this playthrough anyway, playing with Austin P., I think that got me hooked because we had such a great year. You're talking about um, 25 and 8 record. We made it to the Final Four tournament, upset uh, Tennessee in the first round. So we even made it, you know, we weren't one and done in the tournament either. We, then two years later, we come back and we make it to another tournament. Um, that was a good mix. That was a good run with that team. I haven't come close to that. And it's, it's, bumming me out because I would really love to see UAB right here, you know, 20, 20 plus win season, make it to the final four tournament, get a win or two in that tournament at some point. That's what I'm aiming for, but I'm not going to get it. If, if we are, if we're just right here, you know, constantly struggling to get, um, at 500 you know it's not going to happen but anyway that's going to do it for this episode i i think next episode might be shorter if if it's the way it usually is i can usually get through those final four tournaments pretty quick but maybe we'll spend a little bit more time looking at how our team did um, as well might look at some recaps of um, the team play and then you know move on and hopefully you know hopefully i'll start winning but it's it's tough. I'm still enjoying this, but you know, at some point, if I'm not winning, I'm not going to make you guys suffer through many, many episodes of me losing constantly. But regardless, I, I really appreciate the support, you know, of the guys who've been sticking with it and commenting. And I hope you and enjoy at least seeing me win a few games here and there. And look for next episode where we'll cover all the tournaments and finish out this season. Thanks for watching.